52 yeah. years ago, yeah. the well was drilled. Uh, we're buried. You got the total depth of well? Mm -hmm. No, no. 175. 175 feet deep the well is. Static water level. Uh, don't know, we never checked it. Never checked it. Gallons per minute? Okay. I have all that stuff, but I just didn't bring it along. I know the one at home is 50. I think, I think this was nine. Nine gallon a minute? I think so. Does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds great. 60 to 80 is the static water level. Anyhow, we, we put these wells in and we want to figure to put a pump in. What we base that on is not necessarily the total depth of the well, but the static water, which is the water coming up in that well casing. You got to have sufficient pump there to pull that water up. In this case, we're putting it into a reservoir. And we, we did a system similar to this at his home farm, but we put in a windmill versus a solar pump. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I guess you can actually see it from here if you look at the corner right across here. You can't really see the windmill, but you can see the uh, 10, 10,000 gallon tank that's erected up. And he liked that system so well, he decided he would do the same thing here by putting in solar pump, having the well at the high portion of the farm, and letting everything gravity feed down to those waters we'll set down below. So you're not continuously running a pump, pushing water up on the hillside. I mean, we could easily put a pump down close to the building, but it would have took a pretty good sized pump and would have probably been setting the pressure tank at 60, 80 to get that water up here. But in this case, it's probably pumping about five, six gallon a minute, that solar pump is. And there's a float inside this tube. Can we open that or not? There's a float in there. There's a, there's a float in here that when we don't need water, it shuts off. I don't know, jump in. <laughs> take, take my cell phone. It's only about seven foot, seven foot deep. I think it's nine to the top. We talked about doing this, I told Bill it wouldn't work. So I didn't think we had enough slope. And this this is actually, the ditch here is nine foot deep. It goes down there at an angle. So that hydrant turns the corner and then goes down. But I thought we were too high up, you know, on the back side, and we didn't have enough slope here, but we had plenty. So you, you naturally would have chosen the high point on the farm so gravity. We, yeah. we did, yeah. yes. Well, this is something I never quite understood, but can you just select your spot and then start digging for water you got to know there's water there well the, the well driller he picked the spot picked we, the we spot wanted here somewhere and uh -huh. he he looked around and they have their ways by rock formations and looking around and he said you got water there uh -huh. and we did and they, they do have guys that go out and water which to tell you approximately how deep it is to water and they say they could tell you approximately how many gallons a minute you're going to get at that depth I'm not one of those guys, but there are guys that say they can do that. And a lot of times they're very close. I mean, maybe not accurate all the time, but very yeah, close. But is, I mean, logically thinking, if you're up on top of the hill, you're going to go deeper for when, water. Is when we correct? drilled at home, 450 feet, we had three gallons a minute. Mm -hmm. He said he'd go to 500 and quit. At 475, we had 50 gallons. When I put a, a rock and a rope down, we're at 80 feet. At home? Yep. Wow. So the well was 475 feet deep. My water is at 80. So the, that, there that's where we're talking at static water that's, level. It yeah. come up to the, the 80 foot mark. So, so your pump is working. It's only pumping water <laughs> reality 80 feet versus 475 feet. Well, uh, I, it often wanted me about these windmills where the the cistern or the tank is up. Uh, you know, that's what ours is at home. Yeah. Well, doesn't that freeze? <laughs> no. No. What's the deal there? How, how come? Uh, there's, enough there's enough water. I think, in, I think it's just the volume of water. The volume and water. Now, you know, if you had a real small pipe, yeah, it would freeze it would on free, you. But it probably freezes a little bit. But yeah, that's probably yeah. what? But it's 10, it's, 12 foot diameter? 
pretty yeah, bigger. Yeah, it's eight or ten. Ten. Mm -hmm. But it's a real. It's an old railroad car. It's I don't know whether it's half inch thick steel. It's thick. It's really thick. That, if you were <coughs> your gravity, you, you'd have more head. At the top. Yeah, you yeah, would. I yeah. have a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah, I have a when lot of pressure. Saw this? this was like two years. Yeah, okay. oh nine. I mean, you've always had enough sunlight that it's kept yeah. the pump going yeah. enough to yeah. keep the water volume in there. Yeah. And the, and the reality of it is, even on a day like today, you're drawing amperage in here, where you can see the windmill, there's no wind, you're not utilizing any energy to make it work. So probably preference, and Andrew could tell you this, but I think preference would be a solar pump versus the windmill for your everyday operation. I mean, you're bound, you're bound to get some sunlight during the course of the day, wind, well, how about cost compared to the windmill? Uh, <coughs> the windmill, we have about 12000 in that, and less than five in this. Right now. And the tank and everything? Or? Yeah. When I, when I first looked at doing it at home, they wanted batteries. That was in 06. You had to have batteries for solar. It was twenty over $20,000. And they didn't have one like this that it just oh. runs on demand, kind of. So I would have to do batteries and everything, and I didn't want to do that. And it was almost 20000 to run electricity out to that. And I didn't want to do that. And then it was commercial rate because there was no house there. And, you know, when I put that in, I assumed that they had to run the electricity to me. Well, that's not the case. So These panels you have, is that close 3,000? No. Not? No. no What's no. it at? No. They're, uh, I think they were 500 apiece. So you have yeah. about 2,000 watts yeah. there you're getting. Oh, you were talking watts. I'm talking dollars. Nah. <laughs> uh, watts. <laughs> I, I, I forget what they were. Okay. I forget what they are. <laughs> I do. Uh, do you remember out in Bedford? Uh, I know the one individual that sells them, Jeremy Books. Books. Yeah. He's from Superior Pumps or something. I he's from up, up around Clarion. Uh, but it was fairly simple to install. Actually, Harry and I did. I'll give Harry some credit too. Harry and I did. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, $5,000 cost. Or was that what you paid after getting no, the assistance, I, I or was that a, the total? I got a grant for about 3500 of okay. that, so I paid the rest. Gotcha. I think Project Grass actually had money for demonstrations that Andrew was able to get, and also another guy the other end of Lewistown. So we do have two of these in operation currently. And I think we're about to get a third one, I'm thinking. Well, how much expense in the actual drilling of the well? Uh, drilling a well runs about $7 to $8 a foot. Now, you put casing in, you better add about another $13 a foot for the casing. And casing, they case till you get down to bedrock. And then we also make them grout around that so you don't have any surface water that can get down along the edge of that casing. Actually, we're more fussy than what they are for residential wells. They don't make them grout them yet, but we, but we do. They should, really. Realistically, they should. My question was about the cows don't bother this, or do you not have No, this, these are fields here. These are fields, yeah. Probably yeah, you yeah. Would, they would recommend to fence it out. Yeah. I do have an extension. If you see an extension cord on there, that's for, I can hook a generator up to it. If I have to for any reason. So I can just plug that right in. I wired it. I can plug it right into the generator. It's 110. Yeah. yeah. It, well, it converts it over. But yeah. Can you walk through how it works exactly? Well, first of all, we need the sun. Right. Mm -hmm. We get enough sun, and if the tank's not full, it'll, it'll start pumping. Okay. The float, yeah, it comes from the well, comes up into here. And then uh, once the float rises so high, it'll shut off, whether it's sunny or not. Uh, and then it, there's actually a check valve that it, it can't run back. And then actually it's high enough, it's above the float too, it can't run back. The float and check valve and it's too high. And then it just gravities down through, all the way down through the farm. The, the outlet's down at the bottom, about, I think we made it about six inches off the bottom. But like I said, this ditch through here was nine foot deep. I think it's all... Yep. Yep, it is the outlet. Yeah, I think it's all a one inch line. Yeah. You know, from here down to the water facilities. 